Buffalo, the second largest city in the state of New York. This city has undergone a whirlwind of change in its industry, population, and atmosphere. Located at an important logistical location in the Great Lakes region, this once bustling metro has shared a fate, that of many cities in the region, and that is one of much change, strain, and uncertainty. This is What Happened to Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York was formally established in the early 1800s. Located at an important location on the Great Lakes transportation chain, being where Lake Erie meets the Niagara River, it was a coveted location by many. This location would become even more valuable in 1825, when the Erie Canal would link the city to the Hudson River, which at the same time would connect it to New York City and ultimately the Atlantic Ocean via a new route. This would quickly change the landscape of Buffalo, resulting in its population booming from just over 2100 in 1820 to slightly over 18,200 by 1840. On top of being a significant port at this time, in 1842, a major invention would be created in Buffalo, the grain elevator. This invention, powered by steam, would revolutionize the process of moving grain by speeding up the unload process from ships multiple times over. Inventors Joseph Dart and Robert Dunbar's invention would help to put Buffalo on the map in this industry. Railroads and shipbuilding would also be major early industries in Buffalo and would become big parts of Buffalo's economic growth combined with its existing port. Immigration would become a major source of growth in no small part to the city's booming economy. And by the end of the 1800s, electricity from the Niagara River would further solidify Buffalo's economic position. By 1900, Buffalo would be the eighth largest city in the United States. Even more opportunities would come to Buffalo in the new century. In 1902, Lackawanna Steel and Iron would move to the Buffalo area from Pennsylvania. And by 1903, 6,000 jobs at their mill had been brought to the area. The growth would remain strong for the first three decades of the century. The steel, transportation, grain, and automotive industries would all play major parts in the stability of the city. There were some bumps in the road though, as major auto company Pierce Arrow would go defunct in 1938 after an acquisition by Studebaker a few years prior. However, despite this and the challenges of the Great Depression of that period, the population would remain stable through the 30s and 40s and would peak at just over 580,000 in 1950, still good for being the 15th largest in the country at that time. Going forward, however, the city would begin a population decline that would occur quickly and vastly. The 50s would see the Erie Canal begin to lose relevance, as alternate and more efficient options such as the Interstate Highways and the St. Lawrence Seaway would be established. The St. Lawrence Seaway would also see to big declines in the shipbuilding and grain industries in Buffalo as well. Also around this time, the highways would see to the beginning of the end to the Buffalo Central Terminal, a huge passenger station that would finally close in 1979. Suburbanization would also take its hold at this point, with white flight being a large part of this. Aside from this, in the following decades, countless jobs would begin to be lost in the area. Bethlehem Steel, which had acquired Lackawanna Steel and Iron in the 1920s, had as many as 20,000 workers in the mid-1960s. They would cut over half of its Buffalo staff by the late 1970s, before finally dwindling its Buffalo operation to just 1,300 in 1983. Thousands more in the Buffalo area would lose jobs as well at Republic Steel and General Motors around this same time. All of these factors would hit the city hard, with the city losing tens of thousands every decade from the 1950s to the 2000s. In the 1970s alone, over 100,000 would leave, and by 2010, just over 260,000 remained, meaning Buffalo lost around 320,000 people in 60 years. Today it is only the 79th largest city in the US, outsized by some suburbs of larger cities. Once a hub of activity, Buffalo has lost much of what made it big in the first place, with many reminders of the past, such as grain elevators remaining throughout the city. 
Jobs in government, healthcare, and banking dominate the large employers. Though despite the severity of its population losses, the city actually grew by about 17,000 in the 2010s. So what happened? Buffalo relied heavily on its geographical position for growth historically. When better options made its location obsolete, so were many jobs. It would also have the typical Rust Belt manufacturing decline, due to things such as outsourcing and various economic factors. The city today, while probably a little bit better off than it was 10 or 20 years ago, probably has its limits in terms of future growth. Buffalo and its metro are much smaller than that of other nearby Rust Belt cities such as Cleveland, Detroit, and Pittsburgh, meaning opportunities are likely to be more limited. While Buffalo has perhaps turned a corner more recently, it remains to be seen where the city goes from here. Thank you for watching.